This is the Powerlifting America podcast, and today we've got a preview show for the Equip National Championships with experts Natalie Hansen and Joe Capolino. The Equip side has leveled up this year big time, bringing in the reigning world champions Kelsey McCarthy and Kimmy Johnson, along with stars like Taylor LaChapelle, Natalie Hansen, and Greg Johnson, in addition to returning stars like Noah Johnson and Zim McCollum. And on top of all of that, there are still a few surprise bosses that could join the U.S. national team headed to the World Championships in Lithuania or the North American Championships in the Cayman Islands, and you'll just have to listen to the episode and find out who they are. Are. Tune in June 4th for the Equip National Championships in Scottsdale, Arizona. The live stream link is on our website under live events, and we'll post it on our Instagram story at powerlifting underscore America. Thank you to SBD and Aleko for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug tests of powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com and become a member. Now, let's get to this preview show for the Equipped National Championships. Welcome to the Powerlifting America podcast for Equip Nationals. Equip Nationals is a week away, and uh, I'm your special guest host, first time ever on this podcast, Joe Capolino, and I'm here with your other special guest host, Natalie Hansen. What's, hey, what's up, up, man? Joe? What's up? Not much. Not much. Long time. Yeah, I'm excited to do this. Uh, you know, not my podcast, but you know, a podcast nonetheless, and to talk came about of, Equip Lifting. Came out of podcast retirement. That's right. I'm for out the, of for retirement. Equipped nationals. <laughs> for this. I mean, we might have like this might get some good streams. Like if people from from the old spicy find out I did a pod and you know, they might think it's the same thing. Um right out of the gate, I'll say unfortunately it's not going to be the same thing because this is the official <laughs> Powerlifting America podcast. But there's been a lot of raw, you know, shows, you know. King of the Lifts probably talks about Raw Nationals and Raw Nationals already passed. And then they had a show talking about Raw Juniors and Sub Juniors, which is next weekend as well in Scottsdale. But we're all geared up for Sunday, Sunday's equipped Nationals lifting one day. And so we want to go through some of the lifters, just see what's going on. Also, you're competing. So, I'm you know, competing. that's pretty exciting. Yeah. I am not. I'll be there um, for both sessions. Um, Townsend asked me today if I can wrap some knees in the morning. So I can't uh, gamble as much as I had hoped on a <laughs> Saturday night. I am staying at a casino down the road, but you know, we'll figure it out. So I'll be there both sessions. Um, obviously ladies first. So we're going to start with that. And um, it's a, uh, it's a pretty interesting roster because it's like uh, a lot of people who were lifting for USVI last year back in the fold. So it's good to see that. Um, you know what? Should we go through the roster first, or do you want to talk about um, world qualifications first? Let's talk about world qualifications and lay the kind of groundwork, and then yeah. we can talk about the roster and what how we think that's going to play out. I'm rusty on the pods, dude. I you know I just tried to get ahead of myself, but I think it's important to know, like obviously, a lot of these ladies, and then you know beyond that, the men. I think the main goal of doing this competition is qualifying for IPF Open Worlds. There's no real, that's really the path we're all on as equipped lifters. So, um, you know, with the USVI lifters coming back, and obviously this is the second equipped nationals for Powerlifting America. So still pretty new um, mm -hmm. on the schedule. I think it's it's good to set that up. So what do you know about it? Because uh, I'm not lifting and you are, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I want to, I want to talk a little bit about the USVI lifters coming back over to PA. Um, I think it's, I think we're, we had a, a down year as far as um, like world's performance goes, I think, like, I actually don't even know how they placed last year, but the team was sort of like disbanded, the, right? The, the, US the good, team. Yeah. Yeah. The good like medalists for you, the U S team had somewhere with USVI, some weren't there. Like it was kind of a scattered effort. And so I think that um, we're back to a more, a more kind of uh, of the kind of the like standard US team, which is for women is in contention to win the team title at Worlds and men is top three, um, <laughs> right? If we're lucky. Top five, if we're <laughs> top lucky. three for a good year, top five on a so-so um... year. Yeah, so that's a great point because, like, obviously, I've you know I've been to the last nine worlds, some way or the other, and um, you know, the U.S. women's team would put up some crazy scores, sometimes some perfect scores. So, like, literally win five weight classes, which was mm -hmm. always awesome to see. And like, 
you know, we knew it was happening and obviously it, it happened to everybody, but the USVI team, men and women, not really the, the men's team last year was kind of still like the same group of guys. Um, but the women, you can really see it was split, you know, it's like, um, and the team was kind of disbanded. Like we didn't even have a full team for USVI mm -hmm. last year. Um, so that kind of hurt us like two years ago, they placed really well, obviously. Um, and obviously like missing like you and Bonica. I mean, those are the big ones that Becky's we missed. Becky's a big one too. Becky, yeah. But I feel like Becky's yeah. like, is it fair to say she's not actively lifting? Yeah, or? yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like just trying to, because obviously it's like, you know, you can yeah, throw Priscilla sure. in there, but yeah, you know, right. You can, you can, how deep do but, we want to go? <laughs> yeah, but I figure like those teams where we had like you, Kelsey, Bonica, and back then it was Priscilla, you know, and mm -hmm. Becky, but now it's, and Monet too. Monet hasn't oh, really yeah. been active, but like now, you know, like you look at this roster, you can bring back some of the old guard, but then there's also some of the new guard, right? Like yeah. people that were lifting for USVI, which we'll get to like Taylor and Kimberly. So yeah. you have that like five stack again, where you could win, mm -hmm. win or place. Um, the guys are a shit show. Just plain, yeah, I mean, but. the guys are scrappy, though, like they bring in like they get like, I feel like they, you know, place top five or even top three with like, some, some metal, you know, metal performances, yeah. but um, we did well in 2021. <laughs> we did yeah. well, we got third behind okay. Russia and Ukraine. Um, I and feel last, like that's a pretty good placing. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. And like, that's, I've been on so many teams and we placed third in 2016, like when me and Blaine lifted in the same flight, we placed third in um, my first, at my first world. No, no. The, your first worlds in Luxembourg. 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember like drinking out of the goblet. Cause like, I was like, we placed <laughs> <laughs> like, so I've been on a yeah. lot of, I feel like that's where we top out. Cause there's always Russia and Ukraine and that's really mm -hmm. tough. And then last year, even though Russia wasn't there, we just didn't have the same squad. Like we were missing Alex Ma yeah. Mayer and we were missing um, Scott and Ian got injured mm -hmm. squatting. And so like our points were Mm. that was it was mm -hmm. a tough year for us last mm -hmm. year and that's usvi then we're talking about how think america was there but they had a whole different team of like different squad. good young yeah good young lifters on the men's and women's side and mm -hmm. i think some master at least master guys and yeah master guys too mm -hmm. like because like dale lifted and the super oh, heavy from right. the super heavy from georgia that trains at townsend's gym i'm, I'm killing me because i forgot his name but um he's a good dude but like yeah I mean like it was just kind of like a hodgepodge and so it's like it was fun because we had like instead of just like 16 Americans there we had like 30 yes <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, those days I mean, those days are as over a, as a spectator I'm having a hard time like remembering who was on what which team at this point like it, it's you know ancient exactly. history but yeah exactly um yeah so let's talk about let's talk about how we're, so all that being said, last year was also a World Games year. So there was there was some unique considerations in qualifying for the national team for Open Worlds because you could, if you lifted at, oh, if you lifted at World Games and you hit the Carpino, at, you know all this kind of stuff, you could still make the team without doing nationals. This mm -hmm. year is not a World Games year, mm -hmm. so really, yeah. So this, like Noah Johnson, yeah, did this lift. is the yeah. yeah things like that like Bonica so this is the qual this is the opportunity to qualify for everyone yeah I think there is but there's also like um I won't say loopholes but there's considerations that have been made for sure. people coming back over so like some of these people on this list don't have to lift um to make the team necessarily okay so Kimmy uh, probably wouldn't have to lift right because she won exactly last year. exactly or like Kelsey doesn't have to lift okay um you know uh who else was on there that's but it's not me. always really the best it. it's not for for a lot of us it's not always the best decision to just like not lift um 100%. really because you need that you need to you, you need to throw your hat in the ring and and kind of go through the the motions and experience of lifting just to get more practice before worlds um yeah so that's probably their thought process is well let's get on the platform and mm -hmm. and go through some reps. so i think like it, you know coming in for it just from a you know powerlifting America side, and I'll say this: like I think, a, you know, World Games wasn't an interesting like um, dynamic because I think 
once powerlifting America was established, like a lot of American lifters would have just done one year as USVI and then come back or yeah. just skip 2021 worlds, honestly. But there mm -hmm. was like the sentiment, like we don't want to skip 2021 worlds. It was happening because we know it's the only world games qualifier. Right. So we didn't yeah. skip. And then once a lot of us did qualify for world games, you just, you had to ride out the year on USVI, which not, I say it like had to, but honestly, it was a great experience. Like I actually went down to USVI nationals in 2022 to coach, um, met a lot of great people, just saw like that grassroots, like powerlifting thing going on where like, you know, you have like Dave Ricks lifting, but then you also have people new to lifting and they're all mm -hmm. lifting at the same time. It's a little crazy, but like, it was great. It was great. So yeah. I, I got to have that experience and, um, they took care of us pretty well. Like, you know, like really never had an issue. Everyone was great with us. I mean, and they were just so happy to like have us representing them and like, it sucks to have to eventually leave, but it's the right thing to do at the end of the day, honestly, mm -hmm. and like get back together as a group. But that was the interesting dynamic that I think a lot of lifters would have already been back in the fold and like powerlifting America, but it kept us for an entire extra year. So you couldn't between world games and worlds 2022, you couldn't just like switch back either. Mm. You know, so now this mm -hmm. is really the year where everybody's coming back over. So yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it is all equipped for Sunday, but it, it's 111 lifters, which I feel like that's not bad compared to some of the nationals, like open nationals, uh, in like pre-COVID. Yeah, um, yeah. The numbers were like getting under three hundred, like, and I mean, like even under if, under two hundred, <laughs> maybe probably, probably. Yeah. Um, and I feel like there's still like obviously that fracture in federations yeah. that this isn't a great number for anybody, but it's you know you're just hoping eventually like people are going to lift. You know, yeah. I really just hope eventually people choose to lift in the IPF affiliate. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and that's all I'll say on that, obviously. But yeah. Um. So, I mean, what's the target here? If you're not one of these people who are, you know, so I guess I was alluding to like the considerations, like people coming who totaled at 2022 worlds for USVI um, will be using their total on the alternate list um, for worlds. So, but if you choose to compete, then you're not on the alternate list. You can just get your spot, right? Mm -hmm. um, but to get your spot and not have alternates take your spot, you have to, hit a certain total, right? Do you want to explain that? Yeah, yeah. So the Carpino 5, we're going to hear, if you're listening to the live stream, um, probably for any, well, maybe not masters, but for any of these um, upcoming meets, you're going to hear the commentar commentators talking about Carpino a lot. Um, so especially in the open division. So you, we heard about Carpino a ton during Raw National, PA Classic Nationals, and we're going to hear about it here. Um, Carpino takes the average of a certain placing over the last three years. So Carpino five is the total that, um, is the minimum total to punch your ticket automatically for open worlds. Um, so Carpino five is the fifth place total average over the past three years. So you look at any given weight class. So let's talk about the 52 kilo women, for example, um, the Carpino five is 475 kilos. So that means that that's the average fifth place total from 2022, 2021, and then 2019, I assume, because there wasn't worlds in 2020. Um, and so that's how yep. they come up with these minimums. And the purpose of the minimums is to make sure that we're setting up um, a team that's going to be the most competitive as possible. No, I Did we used to use Carpino 3 or am I misremembering? Is that always been Carpino 5? I think it was Carpino three for a while. Um, and then, when and then it was alternates were ranked as Carpino five or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think if you didn't hit a Carpino 10 either, you just weren't even on the list. Yeah, you um, couldn't make the list. Yeah, so so the ten, the number you hear after Carpino is that placing. And sometimes they'll do, a, they'll extend it to a five-year Carpino, I think, if they're trying yeah. to break ties. If there's somebody, if two people are tied, they'll break a tie by extending the Carpino and taking the higher placing, I guess, something like that. So all that to say a Carpino one is the best you can, basically a one Carpino score is 
the yeah, best. Yeah, you can total a yeah. million and your Carpino's yeah, one. Yeah, your like, Carpino's one. Yeah. yeah, so like the best one you can have and then it goes from like goes up from there. Yeah, and they so, they have yeah. a whole chart that's like spread on each weight class yeah. that you could Carpino like 1.33, like your yeah. average placing like okay, you would have placed first in this year and second in this year and first in this year, then you would be a 1.33. I don't even know if that's good math. That's I think the so. Math. Does that math work? That checks out. Yeah. Cause four point. divided, four yeah. divided by three is 1.33. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. We use so Excel there are, this, so. yeah, there are, um, <laughs> there are like, obviously, cause you're adding a placing um, over three, like your total might fit into different places over the three years. Um, you get thirds of points because it's yep. a three-year yep. Carpino. I'm assuming exactly. if you use a five-point Carpino, yep. you'd have point point twos. Point twos, point fours, point sixes, which that's probably why mm -hmm. they don't use it because that's really mm -hmm. annoying. Um, so yeah, it's like interesting. So a lot of people will be sitting on the alternate list and if people aren't making a five Carpino, then that's going to open doors for people to make the alternate list who might not be competing or might be coming over so we can talk about some of those people at the end of the show after we talk about who is competing because there's yeah, some interesting sure. ones out there mm -hmm. um so anyway do you so everybody get going in yeah so everybody going into the competition both both men and women and for all weight classes we all know what that carpino is um, yeah, it's a static number it's, it's a, a static, static number. number it's published for you know each year they like powerlifting america has put that on the website so i know that um for my weight class for example i'm trying to hit a 580 carpino and obviously like that's goal number one right goal number one is hit the carpino and then after that you can have some fun and hit some bigger numbers but as long as you hit that carpino you can punch your ticket to worlds and um and pas head coaches aren't going to you know ask for anything more of you basically <laughs> um so that's how you get to worlds so yeah, let's talk, let's talk about their roster. And getting to world is sick, man. Yeah, getting to world is sick. <laughs> yeah. sick. Um, yeah, so for the women, like I just want to go over the open. Like to be fair, I don't have a lot of information on yeah. like sub juniors and juniors, but um the open's what at least me and you care about and what's exciting <laughs> to us, open worlds being in November. Mm -hmm. Um so the open classes start, I mean, there would be some lighter classes, but we have like some some ladies in the 52 class and uh notably i see juanita nahara on here and yep. it's good to see because i haven't seen her lift in like a full three lift in a while maybe i'm wrong but she has a pretty good total like i'm you know i know she's done like arnold pro deadlift bench worlds like random stuff um yep. single lift stuff and she puts together a pretty good total which i think you said is somewhere like around 450 or something yeah. Yep. Exactly. So it looks like she, her last meet was her last full meet, full equipped meet was the Grand Prix at the Arnold in 2020. Yeah. So I remember that because so, I was yeah, like so coaching Kat Kasabuski like next to her, yeah. and I was like watching, you know, watching the yeah, whatever sure. score we were using the crappy yeah. score that was there for like a year. And she um, attempted a she attempted a world record deadlift. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, she, yeah, she's got a big, pretty, yeah. big deadlift. I think she might have, she might even have had a world record deadlift back in the has. NAPF. No, days. yeah, yeah, I think so. she did at, at NAPFs, um, one or two times. Yeah, so she, she's sick. Um, she it'll be good to have her back on the on the platform. Um, with yeah, just I, yeah, I, think, I don't think you much know, competition, honestly, so just kind of like some show, of these show classes. To make lifts. Some of these classes aren't as deep as we're used to seeing. So yeah. you know, I think it's fair to say she she, she should do pretty well here. Um, the next one, obviously the 57s and uh, Kimmy Johnson just won Open just Worlds won World. in uh, mm -hmm. 2022. I get some really good lifters. Like I, I really like not saying I didn't expect it, but like when it was happening, I, I was like, holy crap. Like this is I didn't sick. expect it. I would tell her like, I, 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 Kimmy's awesome. And I, in my mind, Kimmy had, you know, like she, she's like on her way, but, um, last year winning, like that was, it, it was a surprise. I think she would say it was a surprise. Um, yeah, but, I mean, yeah, she beat amazing. some really, she beat some really yeah. good yeah, like, she was, competition. She was awesome. So, I mean, like I'm trying to go to the results, but it's, it's hard. Um, um but yeah, she, one with her to... last deadlift. Uh, right? I'm pretty sure. No. 
No. Oh yeah, no, she might have. I'm thinking of two years ago where she like pulled. Oh, so two years ago she pulled for the win, and I was like, Holy yes, shit. yep. I don't even yeah. know if I can say that. I can say that on this. Holy um, crikey. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I was like, dude, that's so sick. What a dream, like, to go mm -hmm. for it. Um, mm -hmm. But um, she missed it, and then she just crushed it uh, last year. Yeah. So, like, obviously, I think um, she's going to run away with this class, which is. Right. I just trained with her a few weeks ago. Oh, really? Uh, yep. Yeah, I was in California for a work trip, and I had one session with her, and um yeah she said her training's going well and she was in a deload week unfortunately so I didn't get to see any like big lifts but yeah sure. um, I think she... <laughs> that's what she paid me to say yeah um no she she was um she was deloading but looks so strong and like really um I think what was what held Kimmy back for a few years early on was her deadlift and she really has like figured something has like clicked with her deadlift and so she's, um, she's got a big pull in her now or a bigger pull and really makes her more like a well-rounded lifter, which is pretty awesome to see. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously being like currently the best in the world, 57 yeah, single sure. ply, she's going to run away with it. Um, which will be, it will be good to see, good to watch. Um, so I'm happy I have a reason to go to the women's session or else I probably would have slept in but you know that's just me you know not anything against you guys but all right so the next class is 63 and this is actually a little more interesting you know it's, it's two lifters in the open but it's Taylor LaChapelle oh three sorry three and yeah Caitlin. three it's Taylor LaChapelle who I'm so stoked is back because she like I literally was watching world's 2021 like oh shit she's about to win and she was lifting at the same time as newt and i was like it's funny because as we were watching we we're like oh she, like newt newt's newt's got like a tough task ahead of him like he's he's you know it's a it's a battle and we we're like taylor's killing killing these girls like mm -hmm. and then like obviously the way it all finished like because they were in the Eurosport session so it's going on at the same time so it's like action packed and like newt ends up winning and then we're like holy crap and then ta like taylor lost to coral agara who literally coral agara is like maybe one of like she one might be the, the strongest female yeah right now yeah like all yeah. things together so right. <laughs> obviously it was close like yeah which was just awesome to watch and then obviously she crushed that world games uh medaled don't remember she, the color of the metal silver i don't remember the color but she but she also hit a big pr total um she put like 12 kilos on her total and that's pretty remarkable considering I have it. she she actually oh, had silver yeah okay silver and she silver. Hit, she put 15 kilos on her total which is massive and she missed two deadlifts like yeah she opened at 227 and a half jumped to 237 and a half and missed it twice um so i mean if that had been a little bit like a little bit better I mean, it was World Games. We were taking big shots. Like it's you know, she was that's kind a of lot, the nature of it. She was a lot closer to Corolla Gara, like eight months earlier at World Games, okay. and then Corolla Gara um, just. I mean, at, at Worlds, and then at World Games, Corolla Gara just went off. Like, oh, she yeah. went off. Yeah, that was so, nuts. Yeah, she I was mean, crazy. Is, yeah, obviously Taylor yeah. did awesome, but then she didn't do Worlds last year because she just got into med school, which is yep. so. I'm like, mm -hmm. honestly, I, I obviously knew she would be back because. But I didn't know mm -hmm. she was going to be back this soon, so I'm pretty. I I was surprised to see her come on yeah. the roster, um, and happy to happy to see her on the roster because she is the she's the best 63 that we have. Um, but it's just a matter of like, is she is she getting like does she have enough time to get her training in? Right? Does she have? The, I saw like, some stuff. It looks pretty strong. <laughs> I mean, I think she like literally pulled a PR deadlift, and I was like, oh shit, yeah, that's pretty sick. Like crazy. maybe we should all just like take a semester off of training or whatever <laughs> get but, some get get like increase our stress levels and then if you like decrease them then you like maybe super compensate and you pull it something like that happened because she yeah she's, she looks yeah she okay Looking i think good. she's just some people are just so good it doesn't matter yeah I mean, sometimes yeah. but then also the two other girls in that weight class caitlin gernicki which i said that wrong but i and i know her well i'll just never pronounce her last name right but she lifted <laughs> for team usa last year and she did well. So it'd be interesting to see like if she's gonna touch that Carpino. Um, and then Patricia Sutherland, I think she she also lifted last year for Team USA. And I think she could hit the Carpino. Um like sweet. I mean, like they would obviously I 
I don't think they can be near Taylor, but it's mm -hmm. once you're talking about a one Carpino and then what's, you know, what's the difference to a five Carpino, those two lifters are good and they have like world level experience. So it'll be a good yeah. group to watch. Um, and, and maybe we should clarify, we can, um, we can double up on in weight classes if there's a if there's a vacancy in, in another class so 100 i think one of them if we end yeah. up without a 47 for example then we could have two 63s um just depending on how the alternate list shakes out yeah i think that's why i wanted to talk about those two because i think one of them will make worlds and it's possible that you know maybe you know like you move one of them to 69 and like mm -hmm. if because they're good lifters like you know and you want to fill out the team with the best lifters you have. And I, I think the good thing about powerlifting America, I think there's like, if, if you hit that Carpino, like you'll get on the team and maybe, you know, you make it that decision with the coach, James Townsend. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like, just cause he, he'll be like, you're not going to get held out. Like all oh, the weight class is full. You have no choice, but if you're up on the alternate list, I'm pretty sure they'll try to figure something out. Obviously if you're yeah. a super, like you know, sometimes there's they no have choice, more. But... Yeah. They have some, they have some, they can make some like, decisions with their own discretion yeah i think um, it's more fair honestly because it's like giving the best lifter a chance at least to yeah um be on the team so so maybe just we'll see to, all just to um, talk about numbers just a little bit um caitlin is at her best total from open worlds last year was or not her best but or maybe it was her best it was 425 and um patricia sutherland is at 490 so big pretty big gap there and then oh if, and then, caitlin, you know, but caitlin was in um caitlin was in the 57s oh so that's actually like oh she's come up she's come oh, yeah, up okay. so does coming up a weight class get you you know 70 keys and i'm yeah, sure maybe. i'm sure i'm sure trish <laughs> i'm sure trish is, is putting on numbers she trains with jeff douglas so yeah that's yeah how, she trains that's hard. you know yeah yeah so i mean they both finished seventh in their respective classes last year so you know like seventh out of 10, which are pretty, pretty deep classes for a women's world. But, you know, it was also their first time out. So it's like, I mean, you know how that goes, right? It's scary. It's scary. So, I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, th those are good totals. Like, um, yeah, I'll keep, keep my eye on that for sure. For sure. So now we get to the good ones, not the good ones, but the, I think they're funny because, um, no one's going to lift against Kelsey anyway. No one wants to. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? No Hold one on, wants on to roster. against Kelsey. So yeah, so she's by herself in the sixty-nine class, and uh, obviously she just won worlds last year. Um, mm -hmm. And it it's funny because you she really wanted that one. She won in twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen, and then had some tough battles. Um, well, I had a tough battle in 2021 um, with Anna Castellan. And yeah, she also, she took 2019, she got third. She won, no, 2019, she won. We were in Dubai. In Dubai? She yeah, won? Yeah, she won. She, like, missed all her squats, but won. That's the funny okay. story we have. <laughs> she, like, got her third squat overturned um, to stay in the meet. And uh, oh, I no miss, one... I, Ray, Rhea had gone up a class and so yeah. like they Rhea had like a crazy my ass. they had a crazy <laughs> battle in 2018 and that like I think that's that right just oh yeah people, like lift for lift yeah so she won yeah. on her last deadlift in 2018 and then she won 2019 because Rhea had moved up and no one else was really in there Anna was like there in Dubai and Sweden like training but not in the meet so then she decides to come back for world game and then that year also showed up donia kruger i you know i can't even, i'm saying the names from memory but kelsey got third yeah stephanie kruger yeah yeah kelsey got third and i think she was happy with it like she she had a lot of injuries and stuff and like she was like this whole year we went through in 2021 it was just like crazy yeah. so she qualified for world games and then she crushed that world games got second um to i got to sit go which is just I mean, she just decided yeah. to become one of the best quick loops in the world overnight. And uh, <laughs> she had a really great performance. And then she just went out and, you know, returned to form in Denmark last year. So she won. She totaled 637 and a half for a world record total, which I think was a redemption for her because like Sick. Anna Castellan yeah. had beaten her and set the world record total. And obviously that Kelsey's goal to set the world record total. It just didn't happen in 2021. Mm -hmm. And then. Anna obviously 
proved to That's not positive. be, you know, the best competitor, or the most honest competitor. And then Kelsey was like, oh, I'll set this world record anyway. So it was kind of sick. Um, yeah, but obviously, no, that's, like, that's really sick. She did classic nationals just because she was kind of bored. <laughs> and she, she, yeah, she pulled a <laughs> huge deadlift. So like, I mean, I've been, I trained with her a little bit, to be honest, like she's obviously training really hard and I'm not. So I don't see her as much as I used to, but she'll 100% be ready. So it'll be cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she that would deadlift. She said she told me after that at Classic Nationals that Mike said, "What's your deadlift PR?" And she's like, "I don't know, like 205." And so he's <laughs> like, "All right, put 207 on the bar." I feel like she pulled like 190 on her second or something ridiculous like yeah, that. Yeah, she jumped like 27 jumped, like, and a half or yeah, something. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. She's pulled um, like yeah, she's pulled yeah, she pulled a classic PR. She's pulled more than yeah, that exactly. Right, right, right. right. Um, yeah, no, she's crazy. Nobody wants to compete against Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, eventually we'll get more lifters, I think. Um, yeah. They had a really tough session. I'm just looking back at, like, I have the world's results up. Like, mm. she was in a class with um, 12 lifters, and um, five bombed out. <laughs> so, wow. I mean, it's like it didn't affect her, but, um, yeah, a lot of these a lot of these. Uh, well, that's like just the, bombed yeah, out. Did, uh, did they keep did they keep lifting a lot of them yeah yeah there's like uh, okay. three of there's them deadlifted. For... three of them deadlifted. Okay. so three All of them right. made it to the deadlifts but like i i do remember there was um some tough sessions like you know how it goes like sometimes you're watching a session you're like oh this is the session that everybody's gonna oh, talk it's about gonna be, like yeah. that the judging sucked like the red lights from the front on squad and, yeah and stuff yeah. like that so like yeah she was in that and she like performed crazy which is like you know she'll she'll be ready she's her standard has been brought up to to a crazy level so awesome. obviously Excited everybody will be watching that. that yeah and then next is another solo lifter yeah it's me <laughs> <laughs> how many meets have cool. you done at 76 this will be my second okay. so my num my first goal is to make weight like i said everybody's first goal is to hit that carpino my first goal is to make make weight um, the second goal then is the Carpino. So, um, yeah, I, my total at, and my qualifying meet was, um, I mean, I've never competed this light before, so I was really happy with it despite it being like a hundred kilos below my best 84 kilo total. Yeah. 98 kilos below my best. <laughs> Damn. Um, but it like, I've just taken, I don't know. I've just kind of like taken a, a I don't know, pretty like accept it, accepting approach to this all. And like, I may never hit P like all time, you know, lifetime PRs again. And I've never, I haven't hit a lifetime PR in already in five years since 2017. So I'm just kind of like, all right, whatever. Like, let's just mm -hmm. let's have some fun. Um, so I just, first I got to make weight and then not bomb out and hit the Carpino. What did you total? Um, when you lift it, sorry if I missed that. It, I just brought uh, up the in Carpinos. December five five seventy two. So I was just below it. Okay. Um, I I hope to hit that five eighty. Yeah. Maybe on openers. Maybe on like maybe you know one attempt past openers. So yeah, should be shouldn't be too hard as long as I can hit bench depth. Um. <laughs> I will say I haven't seen a lot. Uh, I haven't seen that matter a lot, which I think is. Good. I know it's good. Townsend Even said bench worlds, I'm way deeper than his than his short rom crew, so he's I like, mean, "You're fine." De Deki Kodama still just won worlds again, like classic yeah. and equipped. Oh, okay. So I think we're good. good. Like the Japanese okay. team is still out there, just yeah. doing their thing. All right. So doing we're what they do. All right. <laughs> all right, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So anyway, it should be fun. Um. And then Worlds at 76 will be the game plan. Just get a bench in, man. Gotta just get I mean, a bench in. Same, yeah. same game for me. So I feel like I can say <laughs> it to you, but just get open open at the right number on bench. Yeah, yeah. You, it's it's got to be it enough to touch, four, but, but less, yeah, low I, enough to press. Yeah. So I did it for <laughs> yesterday. I did it for four very easy singles. So I'm feeling like, all right, we're this is going to be okay. I'm not like a, a Zoom expert or else I would like sketch it, but like Matt Rodock before World Games, which this now could be a premonition, he sent me a Venn diagram and it was like the weight to touch and like <laughs> the, the weight you can touch. press and like do the circles converge or not. And like, I think my circles have really <laughs> never converged. So... <laughs> You know, you got to be well, in that little sliver they, of Sometimes they touch. Yours sometimes just touch. They like yeah. kiss. 
and then you and, get a press command. <laughs> but I still have that still depends on me picking the number that is that that is <laughs> yeah. in that part of the Venn diagram. You have so to pray really hard. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, yeah. You know that's that's always what I'm thinking about. But uh, yeah, it's important. No, yeah, it's, it's so awesome. That's, so yeah, yeah, that'd be good to see you back, man. Honestly, yeah, been, I feel like it's been too long. Like you know. Yeah, I've been training my ass off the whole time. Just didn't couldn't quite couldn't quite get there on some some of these that's know. right sometimes yeah. you train your ass off and nothing, nothing happens, nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. um uh, all right so the rest of the the rest of the roster um alex chavez is in the 84s your old stopping I'm, grounds yeah i'm confused because i thought she retired so oh, i don't know <laughs> she sold all her i mean she she posted all her gear and said like she was done lifting um, but then she showed up on the roster. So maybe she was just tricking us all. And maybe gonna, she entered and like, maybe she's not going to lift. I don't know. I don't know either why way, she would do that. The car- way, let's look at the Carpino uh, though. I want to see if it's, it's like 6:15. Within... It's 6.15. I mean. Oh, she can't hit that. Yeah. I mean, she lifted at Worlds last year. She has experience. Like people will definitely make the team as alternates because these Carpinos are very hard. Like you're a former world champion and like yeah, the Carpino is like, you're, you know, it's challenging. Like, you know, just be honest like yeah. it is i mean Let's look at alex um so alex's I mean, total yeah her total at worlds last year was 5075 um <laughs> yeah yeah so so yeah maybe she's just banking on a an alternate spot or something but it'll be good to have i mean it's i'm glad that we have someone in each class so there's not any real like i mean she looked holes. good she, like I, I watched that session um, yeah she actually, had fun. i didn't watch the session like... she was in my session and i feel like she oh. had a good time she lifted yeah. well um, yeah had a good experience so like why mm-hmm. stop now you know what i'm saying right so yeah and totally. then the only super on the roster is camilla todd which just great she's, overall yeah. person but i think she's, she's amazing i love her he's like you know, she was on, she was out, she was at USVI Nationals when I went in 2022. Oh, really? Yeah, she was like, can you rap me? And I was already rapping like three people. So I felt really bad. And I said, no, but like, I wish I could have. And, but she did fine. And um, she, uh, you yeah, know, maybe she's like, she's actually pretty strong. I'm not going to go she's into numbers, strong. but I know she trains hard and takes it really yeah. seriously. So I hope she does yeah. well. So, yeah, yeah. I wonder too, if, can she qualify for, I assume she can qualify for master's if she so she's lifting equipped but she's in the master's division she can also qualify or she will also qualify yeah for yeah world. i didn't even look at the okay. master's roster but I'm, she might be a double um so she's probably double registered and is really probably aiming for mongolia yeah she could be i don't know if anybody's aiming for mongolia but well um, you know <laughs> to compete at master's you know world. i think probably the way like mike has this set up is like she's going to show up as an open but she's probably double registered but no one's yeah. double counted on the roster right now sure yeah um, that makes sense all right so cool. now we that's the that's the women's <laughs> side now you go to men's equipped open which um i kind of have to figure this out because it's well no now i figured it out it's because there's ones in the weight classes and that's why it's not in order but um it looks like my buddy eric Kupperstein, in the 59s didn't register as an open um right so that kind of sucks but maybe he's like oh, hmm. i'm just gonna commit to masters um mm-hmm. but who knows i don't i don't know maybe that you maybe you don't have to double register like i don't really uh, know maybe they're not like it. interested in their money like <laughs> but it's like for placing sure you have to register but like maybe for world team, for like, team. you don't have to double register I could text him honestly, but that's another thing. Like, no, he, he trains with. Oh Kelsey. no, no, yeah, I see him only as masters. Yeah, he trains right. with Kelsey, like at his house, and I don't see them as much as I should, so I don't know his plan. But, um, he's good. He's good. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chris Tran's not lifting, notab- notably. Oh. And um, he did do worlds last year, but um, I had heard that he might not be lifting this year. Okay. So he's having another child and all that. That's so right. I think, I, think that's, I, that. I think it's notable um, that mm-hmm. he might not lift at all mm-hmm. um, and might not be using that back door in either to uh, do worlds. So, I mean, 59 is wide open, but I feel like Eric, um, Eric's probably the cream of the crop as far as uh, yeah. 59s. 
Yeah. Uh, who else we got? Who else we, we got? got? 66. There's only a junior registered. Yeah. Landon Diepenbrock. Uh, but it looks like he's not registered in the open. Yeah, we're 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 a little we're running light. We're running light. That's a really good pronunciation yeah. of that name too. Um 74s <laughs> is good because um yeah. Alex Mayer is lifting. Um he uh set a world record deadlift at the world games and a couple of them yeah a couple of them yeah he's a stud and i think yeah, yeah now i gotta go back to the world's so oh, no, alex 20, um oh he didn't lift in 2022 but he's he did yeah. well at the world games he did the same qualifying meet as i did uh oh, he did. for pa yeah he did because okay. he was so he was usvi and then he came over to pa he pulled 800 at our local qualifying meet down in San Antonio. Wow. Which is pretty crazy. He's a, oh, he's so, a 74. So he weighs what? 163 yeah. pounds and he pulled 800. So, yeah. So it's funny. Well, he lifted at 74 at uh, Quip Worlds 2021 and he set the 74 kilo world record deadlift. And then at World Games, he weighed in heavy and set the oh, 83 right. kilo world record deadlift. So that's what I was trying to remember, but I just realized. Oh, okay. yeah. So they're both, I think it was like 350s, low 350s for 74 and then 355 for uh, 83. Oh, okay. So Sick. it's pretty insane. Um, that's but he's, insane. His real yeah. weight class is 74 and I think he's going to stretch that record out. Like, yeah. And it's funny yeah. because like, obviously like he's a decent squatter. Like he's, you know, not he's he's lower in the pack and bench, but obviously he's going to deadlift. But because of his squat, he squats almost seven hundred pounds. I think mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. he places well, like he places like mm -hmm. top five, and so he's on the cusp of a medal too. I think, and I think yeah. that's what's probably motivating him. Like he's also does you know he does like rodeos and crap. Like he's, I don't know, yeah. like he gets nuts. <laughs> so like um, i don't know if yeah. he needs this but he i think he wants this no, so. he, lo he loves it though <laughs> yeah he, like yeah he's so chill about it but you can tell he's like he's very like motivated so i Honestly, think he's been dude, training i think he's been training solo squatting solo in gear yeah. at tss lately because um i've seen him a few times he's self-wrapping for sure and then he's like no spotters he's just like squatting i've seen him popping up at game day barbell too have you seen oh that? yeah every once in a while but it's not like i don't know anything about helping. texas but <laughs> yeah there's no one there that knows he's probably looks like an, an alien yeah yeah it's like um, imagine yeah no so i think it's good and like honestly last year like we were all coming out of world games and just saying let's keep the crew together and we honestly like i've been on a lot of teams we've always had fun but like the those years where we feel like we were lifting in like an alternate timeline you know because like we were like i can't believe we're here like we had so much fun the vibes were so good like wow. obviously like some younger like ian and alex and and scott and me and like newt and tran and uh jeff and james being well james wasn't the coach but jeff and gene and mike being our coaches and um the younger girls coming on with kelsey like kimmy taylor chloe like oh yeah um, yeah we had the best time in 2021 we had a great time at world games all together and then like when we were getting ready for 2022 worlds like alex just like a space cadet just didn't register on time like in the usvi system like you go and pay oh, no. your team fee and whatever and like it was kind of like a the, the preliminary rosters posted like you're you're out and like oh, it was no. such a dagger to my chest. I was like, dude, the vibes are off now. Like we're not oh, like we're just we're just broken up. Like Scott kind of semi-retired. Mm -hmm. We're retired. No, you retired. That's he fully. retired. Yeah, he's, he's done. <laughs> he's and uh, then we lost Alex. And like we're down two guys. And yeah. like we don't have replacements. And like yeah. just like the part of the core was already missing. Oh. And so it was kind of like the writing on the wall for that team. Like, but um just so glad to that i'll get to see him next week get to see him lift and he always yeah, looks good yeah. so you know yeah anyway a little side story but yeah that kind of that kind of sucked it yeah did. he's fun to watch there's a couple names in here um that i don't recognize but maybe or like that i don't know for sure but um mm. this jacob pennington um was he a collegiate lifter maybe yeah i Louisiana think so i think there are, yeah there's yeah. some um 
and I wish I knew their numbers. And like, yeah. I feel like Michael Rodriguez, that's the name that I recognize. I was going to say the same. But I don't think that's the Michael Rod. It's like a different Michael Rodriguez, honestly, because 74 doesn't sound right for the one I'm thinking of, the guy I'm thinking of. Um, let me see. This guy's from where? Michael Rodriguez from Texas. Texas. Yeah. This uh, Michael Rodriguez has a, looks like an eight. 30 total if this is the right one there's like it's oh, a huge um, total it's 74 yeah there, well there's four michael rodriguez's in open powerlifting so no this is a oh no no this is a 140 okay hold on <laughs> yeah yeah that's what guy okay, has, he was okay, a collegiate lifter okay then i'm not really well, sure I yeah can't. i think it's just a i think it's just a uh a, a name oh um, fun fact okay actually there are 21 michael rodriguez in open powerlifting well just to let it be known on this podcast if your name is michael rodriguez you better lift really fucking good so you stick out of the, <laughs> you stick out of the herd put a nickname in there when you register <laughs> yeah i mean i mean like there there's actually the the men's like roster is a little bit more robust there are a lot of master lifters guys we know my buddy rick johnson's in there you know like bill helmick's in there um Kimmy, Kimmy um, and Noah's dad is in there for masters, but like, you know. Am I missing something? I don't see Newt. He's not lifting. Oh. Well, so this is like, so he he has a great total from. Um, oh, he's just going to, oh, IPF he's one of the worlds. ones that's going to use his, okay. Yeah, so right now, if you're on the Power of Thing America site and you're looking at the, um, the uh, equipped national team's um, it's the equipped open team under the national teams um, page. Um, you could see head coach James Townsend, assistant coach Jeff, Mike Steinmetz is back. Great. Um, assistant coach Austin Brown. Awesome. He just, uh, I think, got bronze at Open Bench Worlds. He's a great dude that trains with James. And there's all these rules you can read that, say, that are saying um, World Games lifters from the year previous can apply their tools to ultimate pool um, athletes who competed at IPF open equip championship the previous year can apply their total to alternate pool. Um, if we were required to live in another country due to work obligations. So we can talk about mm. that at the end of this. Yeah. The. Um, people that lifted in different countries there's all these rules but then there's also current standings which is i think it's interesting it i shows... didn't see this i this is the first time i've seen the current standing so you go all the way down and you can see the current standing so for women like these people technically don't need to lift kelsey mccarthy bonica brown kimmy johnson mm -hmm. taylor la chapelle patricia sutherland lindsey siemens you know I, okay. I think you know because she's seventh right now like it's in her best interest to lift like we looked at yeah. her stuff yeah um mm -hmm. You know, there's there's other people on here. Um, Interesting. Okay, like that Caitlin makes a ton and, of sense. You can see Caitlin and Alex down there, 27 and 28. Yeah. Like, obviously, it's in their best interest to lift to try to yeah. get that five Carpino. Um, so there's that list. And for the men, you can see Newt, myself, Tran, Noah, Alex, Greg, even Eric. Okay. Um, so you don't have to. I Newt doesn't see. have to lift. But what I've heard on the street is that Newt might not be lifting at all this year, hmm. which is a huge yeah. bummer. I hope he changes his mind. I mean, like, we're all going through some shit. Like, I yeah. I said I wasn't going to lift. I'm kind of on the fence now. But, like, I'm sure he's in the same situation. <laughs> so, you know. Slipping that in there. You're yeah. going to open yourself up for, for me to harass you at, in Scottsdale the whole weekend. That's fine. I mean, a freebie like this, I can never pass up a good deal. You know, if I had to, if I had to lift next week, you had to make a bench. Like, if I had to make a bench next week, you know, obviously I haven't been training number one and I wouldn't have committed to training for this meet, but six months from now, we'll see. Yeah. Um, a lot can happen. Yeah. So you, you, you could see okay. that list. And so like Newt doesn't have to lift, but we'll see what he thinks, you know, got it, I think you're, got it. it's funny because, you know, you can all be like, oh, you know, I'll take all this time off and whatever, like a guy like me or Newt, right. Or Chris Tran um like we're you know we're in our 30s and you know not really right. that with it anymore i'm probably the old i'm the oldest now me me and newt are pretty similar in age um you're like are you 35 yeah 35 
Um, Newt's, Newt's my age. I think he's 33. Okay. I just know we were in college at the same time, but mm. um, I think you're going to have to commit. Like, you know how James works. After the meet is done, the drug testing's back two weeks later. Yeah. I think, you know, so we'll see what Newt does, mm -hmm. but he's not on the roster to get back mm -hmm. to the, mm -hmm. the point of it. So there really is um, nobody, uh, you know, and I hate to, to say this, but nobody, I think that's on that level in the 83s, maybe someone, I like my buddy Anthony Your Grimaldi. Buddy he's, yeah, yeah, but he's not lifting equipped. He's lifting raw. But like this is, it's the easy meat. It's like an abomination. Every, it is an abomination, and I've coached him this whole time. But I supported it because I was like, listen, I'm probably gonna have to go to this meet to coach either like help Kelsey and Cop or my buddy Ian who ended up not lifting, um, or whoever. It turns out the people that I train with that I expect to lift aren't lifting and the people who I never <laughs> expected to lift are lifting. So Tony was trying to do any um, like classic meet. We don't have a lot of classic or like a lot of yeah. powerlifting America presence right now in, yeah. in New England and Massachusetts. And um, honestly, like USAPL meets up here, just like Phil, cause they're usually like one platform, like one session and like, I don't know. These kids are idiots. Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I don't know. They're like, mm -hmm. they, the, the, these meets fill months in advance. And like, we just don't plan like that, especially for Rami. You don't need to plan for that. Mm -hmm. So he's just doing it. So, I okay, mean, okay. So he, here's what I, I'm going to pitch this to you. If, yeah. After he makes two raw squats, you, you should slap on a pair of wraps. He, he thought about wrap. And I think he just wants to see like what his total will be. I think he'll probably try <laughs> and do like a, um he's really busy like he coaches high school football team he's the athletic director at his high school like i don't think he'll ever do a equipped training cycle oh yeah but, um, can't, unless it's in the summer you can a lot of times he trains at school <laughs> like after school in the weight room like mm -hmm. by himself or with his football yeah. kids so like he he'll probably do powerful america raw nationals but mm -hmm. you know this is kind of like his first meet in a while anyway so i was like dude just enter because we'll be there it's, it's done you know it is an abomination yeah. but because it's one of me it's my puppet strings it's okay <laughs> it's okay um, you'll accept it <laughs> yeah so 93 is good obviously 93 is um, really good because the johnsons are lifting damn we Noah. got richard johnson too yeah he's a master that's that's oh, rick that's johnson know, that's rick. rick that's okay. rick you okay. know rick yeah I know. he'll rick. be all right okay. He'll be all right. He'll do his regular numbers, regular shit. <laughs> right, we gotta have to watch those. Watch out for those guys to not, not ac accidentally squat. Like you don't want Rick to come out and accidentally squat for Noah. That'd be a problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We'd have a big yeah, problem. I, th I think it'd be pretty <laughs> obvious. So obviously, we have Noah and Noah. I'm trying to look at his Noah last is performance. Like coming into his own. Yeah, so he plays fourth at Open Worlds. Um, he, dude, people liked watching him lift. Like, we had some pretty big crowds out there, like, because, well, for his session, I remember, too, because Nikki Lentz lifted, and he's a Danish oh, lifter. he's so sick. And he squatted a world record, but the crowd was, like, raucous. But Noah comes out, he hits his opener at 804, and then he goes to 838, and he misses it. And then he comes out and did like a two minute grinder on his third yeah. and got it. And the crowd was going crazy. I'm like, people like to watch this kid lift. Yeah. Um, but I think the unfortunate part of that is like, he was really looking like he would pull 800 pounds um, based on training. But I think that squat grinder like, oh, messed him yeah. up. so <laughs> yeah. he, he made his opening deadlift and that was it. But like, mm -hmm. um, he probably finished as high as he could. So like no real damage done except I think he can total way more. I think like he told a 932 and a half, but honestly, like I really think he can total a thousand keys. Like I, I know it's say, 70 yeah. kilos, but like he squats more than 380. Like he can squat 400 keys. Yeah. Like I've seen it in person. Like he was training he's last so, year at nationals so and yeah. I walked in and I'm like, this kid is crazy. And, um, crazy. cause he looks like just a regular guy. I mean, I don't mean to like, like, project yeah. my feelings on him, but he looks like a regular dude. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah, he's gotten bigger, right? Like, and he's filling out the 93s, um, which is good. I think his, I think Noah's long-term plan probably should be to eventually get to 105 and be a full, like fill out the 105s because he's tall. He's tall yeah, and lanky. Yeah. Like he has some space to pack on muscle, but I, and I think that I've talked with, um, I've talked a lot with um, Jason 
Noah and Kimmy's dad about like how well he's done, like kind of getting his kids to this point in their lifting career. So Noah is Kimmy's younger brother. He he's competing at the like in the open division, and he's like barely out of the juniors. Maybe he's just one yeah, year right. out. Yeah. Um. And he was born in two thousand. Like, they just steadily make progress, and so that's crazy. He's born in two thousand, so he's twenty three. Yeah. Um, he's but still really a like then, right? yeah, I really like Jason has um has a very like steady mindset about it he wants them to like slowly just kind of like take steps forward he doesn't want to push them too hard he doesn't want to like put too big of expectations on them and i think that's great um i think it's good too it and i yeah. i never i never like insert myself in the stuff but like we all talked about training and i'm like listen your lifts are huge now like then you can't do this every single week and so yeah it's like and uh, it's always like there's a you know like there's a big difference in coaching supers there's a big difference in coaching supers equipped versus like a 57 kilo girl like yeah oh, kimmy sure. can probably like hit her head against the wall for like months straight until like you see like fatigue really catch up and affect mm -hmm. her lifts but like just when you're loading 400 keys and you're pulling 360 or 370 like mm -hmm. it takes its toll and so like i sent him some like example programs like this is what a fat lazy lifter who can't recover does <laughs> you know what i'm saying like <laughs> like what i would do and like mm -hmm. he's like i'll take a look at it but i think like he knows like he was he he left some lifts in the gym yeah for world games and worlds so i was like okay so now it's kind of happened twice like and i think they they kind of know so i'm excited to they, see I, that's why i really think he total a thousand because if he could just do his training lifts on the platform which it's not like he's cutting squats high in training or anything like that no um his lifts are just standard that's yeah yeah so yeah he's, he's so awesome yeah excited to watch him lift again like similarly like the crowd you said the crowd loved him in Denmark like I love watching Noah lift it's not like he's like hype or anything either it's just like good lifting like it's just nice to watch <laughs> no I was saying like if he gets to 105 he'll just be like our version of Bill Yi Sergi like he yeah he doesn't, exactly. he doesn't say anything and his neck veins like, are exploding but he's and he's yeah. super strong he just so, like yeah. walks out calmly and then yeah, we have Matt be, Rada Matt Roddock, get, that's my buddy. And, and Greg Johnson. Matt, Matt's going good. I mean, Matt's Matt's always going to be a guy who's going to squat like mid to high sevens, pull close to seven. I mean, these two are kind of the same. So like Matt, Matt, obviously, like he could be a high level world class lifter. He's lifted the last two. Well, he's lifted at his first worlds last year. Sorry. His wife lifted the last two worlds. But um I mean, his, his shoulders just messed up. He's never, you know, mm -hmm. he used to bench more. I coached him years ago. Um, and he just really hasn't been able to um, really like harness the power on the bench. So the total suffers mm -hmm. a little bit, but I'm sure he'll be looking to, uh, to just improve his lifts. Like he's got some of the strongest legs I've ever seen. So um, cool. that'll be good. And then obviously Greg Johnson. Greg. Um, so that'd be a good, like top three to watch Maybe, in that class. Yeah. I mean, Greg totaled 909 and placed sixth last year at Worlds, and uh, Noah totaled like World record that Yeah, but obviously, like the talking about the crowd loving someone. Greg was like, yeah. the man. Greg was like yeah. the toast of the town, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the, the TV stations want to interview Greg, and he's like <laughs> on IPF posters, and like just every right. video highlight was Greg, like just hype out of control i cried yeah. I, I cried yeah i, mean, I, I yeah. cried, I cried when greg almost i thought greg died in uh <laughs> pilsen because there's just something about we greg. don't need to talk about it yeah there's something like, about greg we don't need to talk about his pilsen performance here because i think he hates it and he hates that we always talk about it but we i think it's just it a point like him, but, i'm inherently yeah. like kind of a judgmental mean like person like i'm like oh yeah oh that guy oh, that guy walked out of squat and fell like oh what an idiot like whatever mm -hmm. and i just walk away but for some reason like it happened to greg i was like all messed up and then like <laughs> honestly when he pulled that deadlift I, it was like this is this is the best like this is yeah. just the greatest thing i've ever seen in sports mm -hmm. honestly mm -hmm. so it's just it's like so awesome. it was sick we were going crazy so like obviously um hopefully couple of those guys get on the team and another one with a shoulder injury too greg yeah and well that's the greg thing greg, have, yeah. greg talk about the strongest legs in the world greg is a freak i mean you can mm -hmm. see this kid he looks like a robot like not a robot he's very charismatic but like his body is like yeah hard his body is yeah. hard <laughs> I'm, like, I'm getting into a weird this is like the weird portion of the podcast greg is a hard body okay 
he's shredded because he he cut from yeah. 105 to 93 like yep. in the last yep. year or the last like, uh, couple, 18, well, it's been a couple few years, years. Yeah. yeah um but he's I mean, he absolutely looks, shredded he looks insane his legs are huge yeah. he has a freaking massive deadlift at 93 he'll squat and deadlift eight like on a on a good meet for him Mm -hmm. but again like it pisses me off sometimes watching him bench i'm like dude just like just just wear a tighter shirt like it's gonna feel better <laughs> but you know because he you know before the shoulder injury he was benching like low 500s and now he's like yeah benching 400 pounds i'm like dude that is yeah. so much to let off your total like he would have yeah. placed top three <laughs> yeah but, he often i think also often opens raw and throws yeah, a shirt on yeah um, he'll like just pr press be... 170 raw and then like no go no to 185. Like 140 oh okay Okay, yeah, I'm thinking something more. No, yeah. Um, but yeah, he he just to save his shoulder, I think. So hopefully, um, hopefully he is figuring something out with his shoulder. But other than, if not, I mean he and Matt Roddick are gonna be yeah, um, gonna be close. And then yeah, we were watching them bench at the bottom of the flight, the two of them. <laughs> um yeah, so that'll be good. And then obviously we have a few classes left, the um one of fives. Which I'll start with Dale McLaren. He lifted mm -hmm. last year for the um, Powerlifting America national team, um, and he did pretty well for himself. Honestly, he's a, he's a big squatter. He squats in the mid sevens. He pulls seven, and he does. He benches like close to six in the bolt. So I mean, he, I know he's a master lifter, and I so I don't know like what that's going to top out at or if he can hit that five Carpino, but. Um, He's always he's always good to have in there. Dale's yeah. Dale's done every freaking nationals probably for the last fifteen years. So, um, great dude. But yeah. obviously, what I'm more interested in <laughs> is uh, my buddy Luis Jaimez is lifting, and uh, I did not. So I knew Tony was lifting, and uh, we just planned to go down. Me, him, and then Alex Babel. Rip mm -hmm. Spicy PL, uh, mm -hmm. Spicy PL podcast. He was mm -hmm. like, "Oh, I'll come to you guys." So we booked a room at the talking stick casino down the road so i'm like yeah we're that's what we'll do we'll just make a weekend out of it um low stress tony's lifting raw and then like li i'm i'm not exaggerating to make this more entertaining three weeks ago luis was like oh i'll lift so he just entered the meet and he hasn't really <laughs> been training but then he just trained maybe he got in gear like three four times three times well, he's, he's an OG, he's an og with tons of experience i don't know that he has I don't know that he well yeah. he could hit the five carpino he knows he that can? and he's like oh okay. he could he could yeah like if you yeah. look at his best i think his best total ever is 932 and a half yeah. and the five carpino at 105 is when was that 950. it was in 2020 in december oh that's, that's the last not time that he competed. long ago I oh no no been like... i might be wrong he he <laughs> It's around there. It's around there. Nine twenty-five, maybe. But it's it's uh nine twenty-five. Yeah, you're it. right. In twenty twenty. Nine twenty-five. Yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Nine twenty-five. He's competed in that's different weight classes, good. so I have numbers mixed up. Yeah, he's all, nine twenty-five, and he hit his op he hit his third squat like easily at that meet, was which was twenty more keys, but he like um did some weird thing where he went down, downward motion. So he got, he, he like, I was like, dude, that's the deepest squat I've ever seen you do. And he like, he, he handled the like weight does not bother this kid mm. lifting to standard bothers this kid. But <laughs> yeah, weight his benches with his, he is, yeah. He's one of those people that like, hit a let's, not, let, bench, but let's not say what's going to happen right. because okay, I don't want to okay. alert anybody to it, but like yeah. he's me, we were honestly just like hanging out and I was just like, dude, you're so freaking strong. Like if I was like as strong as you, I would be, I would have been way better at powerlifting. Like I actually <laughs> had to train like, so, you know, I, Sweet. you know, I I'm wish excited. he prepared longer, but, um, he also, you know, that's just the way he rolls. Like he's so busy mm -hmm. with his yeah. like, actual life that he's doing this meet. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty fun. So I think yeah. we're, we're all pumped really up fun. for it. Yeah. Um, Sweet. So, I mean, is he like, is he maybe going to, is he in contention to win? Like, yeah, I mean, I think him and Dale okay. are pretty close, okay. like in the low 900s. That's but I think crazy. Luis is basically saying, like, if I hit the five Carpino, like, I'll keep lifting. If I don't, then I don't. All right. All 
So I think Dale also tolls around 925. If I like my memory is all okay. fuzzy, but and I'm going no, no, no research, but I no think it's references. close. No yeah. references. I think it's close. Um, um, I just want to call out one person on here, Alexander McNeil. That's Dana McNeil's brother. Lifting single fly. Yeah, so he good. handled her. He handled her at Classic Nationals, and he's he's built like Dana, like tall, lanky, um, tall, lanky dude. But he's freaking strong, and so it's cool to see him that he lifts in gear. I was like, you know, I didn't know that she had a brother who lifts. Period. I, I used to train with Dana in Anchorage, and then um, she said, "My brother's going to handle me in the meet." Like, cool, and then. Uh, I, I was like, does he lift? She's like, yeah. <laughs> and then I, you know, learned that he was an equip lifter and I was like, oh, that's sick. How do so we get Dana? He it? has some good genetics, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that so. could be something. That could be something to watch. Yeah, I think so. All right. I like cool. it. That's that's mm -hmm. like the that's like the diamond in the rough of this podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we got 120s. I'm going through. I'm oh, looking. <laughs> There's a lot. I'm looking to find one that I know. Um, um so I know Bill Wilson. McCarthy. <laughs> yeah, I know Wilson. He's a great dude. Bill McCarthy. He's a great dude. Michael Calter, yep. another great dude from Maine. I know him very well. He's like lifted for know. the Dutch national team. He's done worlds for oh. um no, he's done worlds for the Netherlands. Sorry, misspoke. Oh, but, masters too. Steve Mann isn't there, but he. But he's banking on his. He has the option to lift, I guess. So. Okay. Because okay. his his Carpino is. Well, he's ace. That might be rough for him. If uh, people like Luis slide in, <laughs> or something, <laughs> or something like that, or by like... the skin of their teeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like, uh, well, Alex Mayer's already on there, but yeah, there's some people that will slide in there um yeah so he's probably you know 120s we'll see no that'll be, be a, an interesting a, one I a think. new national champion yeah yeah cool and then 120 plus you got our guy zen mccollum um <laughs> his numbers look great his numbers look great he's, and his, his lifting oh uh, look who it is <laughs> <laughs> zen's lifting has come so far in the last i mean i would say even the last year Oh my God, that's so funny. How many um, hours did we have to put in with Zen? Conversational. Yeah, yeah Hun conversational. Hundreds. Still happening. It's still it's still going on. Um, but his lifting. So he's been, he's been working with Townsend, I think, a little bit more closely since he he's coaching went to his open bench worlds. And yeah. Bench so Townsend has... coaching his bench, but Townsend's also just like holding him to a standard, right? He's not gonna he's not yeah. gonna like mince words with Zen. So he's like, you need to squat deeper. You need to like. There's, there's some stuff that Zen has implemented, I can tell, like in his kind of approach to lifting that has just like helped him chill out a lot. Like, he's, wow, that's interesting. He's way more calm. Is that from you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's doing he's like, um, something he calls the napkin. It's like an old program I sent him. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm never going to coach him because I can't deal with that. No, um, but you can give him a program. Worth, it, uh, yeah, but I gave him like old program and he'll just like plug his own numbers in. And yeah. so like he's doing what I would do really for squat yeah. and deadlift and he's doing what Townsend would do for bench, which is a really good combo because like even when uh, like I was training with James, like my bench was awesome. Um, yeah, I feel like everyone. It was the Townsend, most consistent. Townsend, yeah. It was the heaviest yeah. raw and equipped too. Not that I yep. even cared for the raw, but just the training was just good. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I mean, Zen, yeah, and as Zen gets older and he's like, you know, finds himself as a person, I think a little bit more, he's like been really able to like focus on lifting. Like, you know, he, he was contemplating like not lifting and I was like, you love it, dude. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Slap, I'll slap you. Yeah. So he, he loves it. it. He has a great time. And, um, I really just like, I really just hope that he does well and makes this team because he'll Carpino five if he just like doesn't screw up <laughs> so i think he's a the, big lifter i mean his lifts are yeah he's gonna squat quality, over 900 pounds the, the quality of his lifting has come so far um it's really really pretty incredible to have seen the like just improvement because he was always really freaking strong right like oh, when yeah. he first started putting gear on you were like you watch him lift and you're like this kid is so strong but these lifts are just a mess right like it was just it was yeah. all over the place and he now would, like, he's safety just like bar squat 700 pounds i was like oh, you yeah. realize you're like 21 and you're doing yeah. that like you're yeah. crazy yeah 
yeah so he's he's and and you know he would hit some really big benches but like it was just kind of sloppy and he's cleaned it up so much that I'm yeah I'm really excited to watch him lift uh, Bryce is gonna wrap him so he as, he as gets, long as he's not tired from wrapping wrapping you me. that's what I heard <laughs> Yeah, but, no, well, he's I, gonna be fine because he normally wraps. He was wrapped me and Zen on Zen's heaviest squat day, back to back and forth, like for like four sets for me and maybe like four sets for Zen. So Bryce yeah. was like wrecked that day. He was wrecked, but he won't have to do it. He won't have to go that crazy this time because it'll he'll no. get a. Little I mean, I'll be lord, I'll be lording around watching, but I don't yeah. know if I have wraps to give at that time period. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll make sure yeah. he's taken care. But he'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, he's wearing he's wearing my deadlift suit. You know, I sent him some suits and your belt. My belt, which he's so big. proud of that belt. I know. I mean, I did give it to him <laughs> when I said I was done and I was just pissed uh, last year, like after like what went down and missing my third deadlift. But um, he sent me an old belt of his. That's a two X. Mm -hmm. That belt's a three X because I'm slightly slimmer, mm -hmm. so I can fit in Zen's child belt when he was a child and he was <laughs> you know 300 pounds i fit in that room. um and he can have the, the belt i gave him was way nicer it's a, yeah, the most it's beautiful so titan nice. belt in the, so like, nice i would I, yeah. I honestly wish i kept it and like cut some inches off it and like had it re like um like redone by a shoemaker mm -hmm. but like whatever then deserves it um he makes me like laugh he, every day he so, loves it yeah he's such a he's such a funny kid so he um, said he told he told me yes the other day on Saturday he told he called himself the wettest man in powerlifting and I said you no. can't call yourself that I he, was like that, that's one thing I, I like, can't stand for you are the I was like no nope, you are not uh and he's like well Joe's retired and I said Joe's still in powerlifting so <laughs> as long as Joe's alive you are you should have seen he, he should have <laughs> seen me today I trained a little bit and it's it was disgusting so, so there's no, Zen can't <laughs> no he can't hold a candle but yeah. um no I so I mean I, I I'm excited for the meet um yeah you know I think it's more lifters than last year so it'll be good I mean last year yeah. we were all in one session same time so obviously it's more lifters okay so um it'll be good man um it's gonna be great but anyway for the men the other stuff I want to talk about is like you can see that um rule that's like if you're living in another country so mm -hmm. i think ian will be on powerlifting america's equipped team ian bell oh so he didn't have a total from equipped worlds because he got injured squatting mm -hmm. and um but he did japan nationals he j that's why he did jpa nats and mm. but and i was like well i'm like the only person watching the stream whatever because i was in i was actually in vegas for work and so i'm like up and i'm like watching the stream and i'm like what the hell is going on like he missed his first two squats like bad did he miss time as opener well so <laughs> funny story i'm like literally sending voice messages to like our group chat and i'm like hey man i was like i'm like literally like laying in my bed and i'm like watching this shit and ian's bar is loaded and i'm like the live stream was pretty good but the you know uh yusuke sataki was doing like the color commentary mm -hmm. i have no idea what he's saying <laughs> and bars loaded though and all i see is this like this like nice pair of glutes like bent over and that person's like still wrapping ian i'm like okay this is really bad like they're not going to make it and so i just see this guy's ass in the air like whoever is wrapping ian and like you can barely see ian and gene's just standing there like all calm like usual gene yeah and, like they it wasn't even close to making it like oh. and so what had happened was like um there were some lifters who were in there you know the old scoring system we used to use where like if you were entered as a master in an open you would be in there twice mm -hmm. so like he thought he was five oh. out but really he was like two out because all the names are written in japanese and so like actually... mr mr akutsu was lifting he's uh, he owns tokyo extreme power okay. and uh he usually lifts at open worlds but he's he's easily at m1 maybe more and yeah. um he was in there twice and there was another like master open entry and um so they just totally missed time the first rap so oh that's God. done that's like... so then i'm assuming he got cold and the second squat he's like 
was out there on time but he got he got annihilated like crushed he, he just like and, tip, yeah he, like yeah i'm like what are we gonna do i'm like what are we gonna do i was like but then he just did a normal he'd like it did a normal smoke show on his third yeah yeah and then uh he benched really well like he's been benching really good like over awesome. 600 pounds for him and then he pulled 804 on a second attempt i think and then um just passed his third deadlift so cool he has a total now that I yeah. believe will be put into the alternate pool. And obviously his okay. Carpino will be like th three or something like that. Something so. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that's, that's, that covers the men. I think, I don't think there's any, uh, anyone else coming off the top rope. Really? And Blaine's not coming. Uh, back. I was just going to say did they did they make a special rule for Blaine? <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no special no. rule for well, Blaine. Unfortunately, I think he's still struggling with yeah, I the think so. injuries to his back. I, th mm -hmm. I think looking at it, he would love to be lifting, but yeah i, I also don't like, think yeah. he would lift with power thing america um uh i don't know yeah he sounds he, well he, i I've feel like if him. open if open worlds was on the line i think he would he if kind of all of us there i think he'd maybe give him a go but um <laughs> i don't know i i don't know if the russian I, probably the russians won't be there so really i don't think so i don't think they're allowed back yet they haven't been at your Euro europeans just passed they weren't there so it's like they're not mm. going to let them in just for the end of the year just for opens i think but i think next year that will be back. this is That's what and I've it's still hearing. about the it's still about the war yeah i mean obviously when you go to equip meets in europe like the ukrainian team is like they're very well represented in the referees mm -hmm. ipf leadership and obviously the athletes and i just think they're not ready to um have that going on yet so interesting. it's interesting i mean to whatever mm -hmm. someone's you know i don't have really like formed opinions on it but i think it's probably mm -hmm. the safe thing to do um would i personally would i would i have loved to compete against kono one more time yeah I just call him kono kanavalov like yeah, yeah like i'm not about like oh like i hope he's not there like obviously i saw a really huge opportunity last year to win and you know that didn't happen but still was a huge opportunity and um but like it just sucks that it you know the athletes are the ones who kind of suffer yeah, yeah. and like i don't know yeah. the athletes personal politics and like honestly they're probably not allowed to say their personal politics so yeah. it's just a, yeah. it's a crappy situation like i obviously would love to see one of the lifters they make a quick power of thing awesome on a world level like mm -hmm. the competitions are way crazier when you have those girls and guys there so it's unfortunate but i think eventually time never stops and yeah things will change so yeah yeah hopefully so awesome. what do you think should we wrap this up i think that was pretty yeah sick. i think we, i think we're gonna have a fun weekend i'm excited for uh the sunday afternoon session because i'll be done yeah and you can just watch <laughs> and it's you know it feels really stressful up until like once i finish maybe it feels stressful until my opening deadlift is done and then i'm like all right I don't care anymore. I mean, we're, we're talking equip lifting. I've always said I am nervous puking, throwing up until I get an opening bench. And then the rest is like just a, <laughs> like a ride on a rocket ship. Like it's a blast. Yeah. Like deadlifting yeah. in the meet is so fun. It is fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm never yeah. really nervous about my deadlift opener, believe it or I just, not. That's the one lift I, just, I haven't uh, bombed in yet. So, <laughs> yeah, I just have a tough relationship with it. So, yeah. If, um, if I take enough ibuprofen, no, I'm i'm good yeah that's right that's right i forgot about all that stuff but also sumo <laughs> deadlifts i feel like it's more of an equipped lift like when you're pulling sumo yeah because you're like you're counting on the equipment to like be in actually be in the know, right place yeah and like do its <laughs> job and yeah your timing's on like you could be freaking messed up hurt like mm -hmm. your suit ripped like i've had holes in my suit that i didn't realize for a deadlift suit it doesn't matter it doesn't it doesn't yeah matter. yeah um, yeah i gave i gave conventional equip conventional a, a good go for about four or six weeks yeah i mean it might not be good it. but it will be consistent you mm -hmm. always, yeah you always, always, it's consistently <laughs> shitty <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so yeah man so i guess i'll see you in a few days yeah all right thanks all right, for well, having me on have a good week nice to stay talk healthy to you sleep well yeah. and good uh, luck to everybody competing who's listening to this if anybody listens 100 percent. hopefully i'll uh hopefully we'll get to catch up when we're out there yeah sounds good all right, all right. see ya thanks everyone